Welcome back to Channel 37. It's a warm summer evening here in Amsterdam and it's making us think of Barcelona. Indeed, yeah. Barcelona is the base of the company who produced the kits that we'll be building today, which is... The Faco. We've been really keen to build something by these guys for a while now because they've done so much for the DIY community in Europe. In fact, they were one of the first to start producing open source kits that anybody could buy, anybody could alter and reproduce. And they've organized a lot of workshops to bring this DIY spirit to more people in Europe. We reached out to Manu at Pafaco and expressed our interest in what they were doing. He informed us that they are re-releasing Rebel Technologies series of Euclidean sequencers. There's the Strahea, Logoi, Cosmata and Foreo. And we get to build the Strahea and the Foreo. With my high school Greek, I would say this is pronounced Stoichaia. Okay. Stoichaia. Yes, I was wrong. Now, Stoichaia and Klasmata are both Euclidean sequencers. And Euclidean sequencers are very popular in Eurorack because they create these pleasing musical rhythms. This actually goes back to an academic paper that proved that many classical musical rhythms could be generated using Euclid's theorem of placing an integer number of objects within a predetermined amount of space at equal distances. So for generative patching that has a pleasing musical quality, this is very useful. To give each module the attention it deserves, we've decided to break this up into two videos, each with their separate review and build. This is the video for the Stoichea, which is a dual Euclidean sequencer. This is what we got from Bafaco. It's the classic black box. And what do we have inside? The Storheo, of course. Let's check it out. So here we got the heart of the module. It's a preloaded AppMel chip with the required software. And we also got some other parts here, various control interface parts, the potentiometers. And this is how you know it's from Bafaco, because it comes with an earlies, the Eurorack screws that you can tighten by hand and with a custom Befaco tool for their banana nuts. Here is the classic black panel. We are super happy that Manu shares our taste and aesthetics. Note the Rebel Technologies logo on the bottom, so you can tell it's a collaboration. For the inexperienced builder, it's reassuring that Befaco kits come with these detailed build instructions. So you can really tell that they're making sure people have a good time building these. One thing I already like about this module is that the front panel has been simplified. I found the original Stichia front panel to be a little counterintuitive, uh, but this one is just very clean and easy to navigate. With so many options for Euclidean sequencers, you might be wondering why this one? Well, there's three reasons. The first is that all the functions are at your fingertips, making it really accessible for a kind of live situation, with each function having a big knob. The second reason is that there are very few options for DIY Euclidean sequencers, uh, most of them being professionally built, so this gives you a hands-on experience. Also because Channel 37 is focused on DIY, this makes it much more relevant for us. And the third reason is that it's just very affordable. So if you're just building up your rack, Bufaco is a really sensible option. So we're going to head home and we're going to build this puppy up and make ourselves some Euclidean rhythms. I'm excited. This is everything that should come with your kit. Let's start with wiping the PCB down with isopropyl alcohol. Now open bag A. We'll start with 9 1K resistors. I'm using tweezers to bend the legs. Place the resistors in these positions. Now place three 10K resistors. These are their positions. Use a multimeter to distinguish the 100K and 100 ohm resistors. First place the 200K resistors, then place the 200 ohm resistors. What's left is two 1 mega ohm resistors. Place them both. Then solder everything in place. When soldering from above, make sure the solder flows all the way through the via. Clip the PCB and clip the legs, holding them down with your thumb to make sure they don't jump up in your face. Sure up any soldering that needs extra attention. Then place the single diode, minding its polarity. 
Next is the IC socket. Make sure to orient it correctly, matching the notch to the illustration on the PCB. First, solder the two corner legs, then check to see that it's completely flush with the board before soldering the remaining legs. You can rest the PCB on a piece of foam to keep the socket in place while you solder. Next, place 300 N capacitors. Splay their legs so they stay in place when you flip the board. Next, two 10 UF capacitors. These are polarized, so match them to the illustration on the board. Next is the 10 MHz resonator. This is a sort of clock source for the chip. Solder everything into place. Then snip the legs. Next up, four transistors. Next, one voltage regulator. Note you may have to splay the middle leg to match the holes. Then solder everything into place. Next, we're soldering a power connector. Solder two corner pins, then check that it's flush with the board. Then solder all the remaining pins. Now, it's time to clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol, because you won't have another chance. Next, place the Atmega into the chip socket. By pressing the legs on the tabletop, we bend them inward, making it easier to press them into the socket. Then, place the five jack sockets. Next up, the three switches, making sure to remove the washes and nuts. Place the six potentiometers. Then, place the three LEDs. Watch their orientation as these are polarized. Slip a nut onto each potentiometer. Then, wiggle the front panel into place and add a few nuts to keep it there. Put some sticky tape on the LED holes and wiggle them into place, making sure they're flush with the front panel. Then, solder the LEDs into place. Solder all of the remaining control hardware into place. Note that some of the holes are quite large and you may need to increase the temperature on your soldering iron to fill them completely. Then remove the sticky tape and snip the legs. Give your board a final clean with isopropyl alcohol. Then place all of the nuts, including the colored banana nuts. Black is for inputs, red is for outputs. Now rotate all potentiometers fully counterclockwise. Place the knobs, but don't press down yet. When you're sure they're all perfectly aligned, start pressing down with the force of titans. Really show the board who's boss. You can do it, big boy. Or girl. That's it, your stahia is finished. Now do a quick smoke test by attaching your new unit to a power supply. This is one we built specifically for testing. And that is how you build a stahia. We know you've had to wait a little longer for this video than for our other ones, and that's because we encountered some surprises during the build. One of which is that because this was an early test version of the kit, uh, we didn't realize that the microchip would arrive unprogrammed. <laughs> so we had a choice, either to wait for a pre-programmed chip in the mail, or to go the hard way and learn how to use a JTAG programmer ourselves. And we opted for the latter version, inviting our friend Stein from This Is Not Rocket Science to come over for a lovely dinner and to explain to us how the this, how to use this little gadget.
but after programming the unit, it ended up working on the first try. So let's get to reviewing. Let's start with the first category, face. It's a very pretty unit. I love the sleek matte black faceplate. Uh, the faceplate has been simplified compared to the original Rebel Technologies version. The knobs make it look like something out of a James Bond villain's <laughs> control room where they're like controlling space lasers. It's pretty sleek. What do you think, Lily? Um, I would agree with that. I had a, a similar kind of association with the aesthetic. It's gorgeous. It does what it needs to and looks really good doing it. The second category is the crave category. Do we want it? What do you think? I think everyone needs a Euclidean sequencer and this does a really good job of creating really, uh, really nice sounding rhythms. So it's great. Euclidean sequencers are popular in Eurorack, so you have options. One of my favorites is the dot sequencer. I think it's a really nice, very compact unit with a visual display to show you the Euclidean rhythm. But if you want to go DIY, Stichia is a great choice and also the only one as far as I'm aware. So the next category is groove. Does it groove? Euclidean rhythms are inherently groovy and pretty catchy, um, but it's just one element in, of, in a composition. So you really have to focus on what you can do from there. Yeah, so you can do different things with it. You can sequence percussion with it. You can sequence a melody with it. You can use it to add accents to another part of the composition. But just a repeating Euclidean rhythm alone is not an idea. So it can be the foundation of a track, but it would be a little difficult for it to be the highlight of the track. So it is inherently groovy, but you have to get creative with it. Final category is the noob category. How easy is it? Extremely easy. Uh, my little sister could do it. It's absolutely super straightforward, through hole soldering, amazing. It took all of 20 minutes to put this device together. The soldering was easy. Uh, it worked on the first try. So anybody could do it. This would be a really good start for building your rack modules. There's only one thing that was really challenging about the build and that is getting the knobs on the shafts. They are so tightly fitted that with my hands, which are pretty strong, I've been climbing for 20 years, it took all I had to get them on there. And if I'd made a mistake in the soldering and would have had to take it apart again, that would have been drama. The other thing that was a bit challenging is that one of the voltage regulators has three legs that are placed in series, but on the PCB they are kind of staggered. So you have to use tweezers to bend the leg uh, so we'll go into the holes easier. But those are easy fixes. Um, now that we've told you, hopefully you'll be prepared for it mm. and it will be an easy build for you. Yeah, so we advise you start climbing directly tomorrow so that in 10 years you'll be prepared to put the knobs on for the Stichia. <laughs> that was our build of the Stichia by Rebel Technology and Bifaco. Please also watch our build of their Foreo device and watch any of our other videos if you like. Um, please like and subscribe. We appreciate your support and see you in the next one. Is that okay? Perfect. Okay.